We know the cells of our body need to use ATP to actually carry out many different types of cell processes. Now, one source of these ATP molecules are fatty acids. Now, where did the cells of our body actually obtain these fatty acids in the first place? Well, the answer is simple, from our diet. The majority of the fatty acids used by our body to actually generate ATP come from our diet. But the next question is, can the cells of our body actually synthesize their own fatty acid molecules from constituents? And the answer is yes. In fact, this is exactly what happens when we eat one too many donuts. So if we eat excess carbohydrates or protein, these molecules can actually be transformed into fatty acids and then stored as triglycerides in our adipose tissue. This process is what we call fatty acid synthesis. So fatty acid synthesis takes place predominantly in our liver cells and hepatocytes. And to a smaller extent, it also takes place in lactating mammary glands and in adipose tissue. So in the next several lectures, we're going to look at the details of this complicated process. But in this lecture, what I'd like to focus in is on seven important facts that you have to know about fatty acid synthesis. So fact number one, Fatty acid synthesis takes place in the cytoplasm, and this is in contrast to the beta oxidation, the breakdown of fatty acids, which takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Fact number two, in eukaryotic cells, just cells of our own body, we actually have a single polypeptide chain, a single protein known as fatty acid synthase that catalyzes the elongation, the formation of fatty acid molecules. And this fatty acid synthase actually contains seven different catalytic sites, which each carries out its own specific function, as we'll see in the next lecture. Now, in addition to these seven catalytic sites on the fatty acid synthase, we also have a domain we call the acyl carrier protein domain or ACP domain. And attached onto this acyl carrier protein is a phosphopantothiene molecule, which is a vitamin B5 derivative. So to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have the fatty acid synthase shown in red, and that contains seven catalytic sites, which are not shown. In addition to those seven catalytic sites, we also have a domain we call the acyl carrier protein domain, and that shown in green and attached onto this acyl carrier protein is the vitamin B5 derivative we call phosphopantothiene. Now on the tip of this phosphopantothiene is a sulfhydryl group and attached onto this sulfhydryl group is the next uh, acetyl coenzyme A molecule that will be used to actually elongate that fatty acid chain. So we see that fatty acid synthesis incorporates carbon atoms from uh, acetyl coenzyme A molecules onto that growing fatty acid chain. And as we'll see in more detail, those acetyl coenzyme A molecules are attached onto this sulfhydryl group. Now, the process by which we actually form fatty acids isn't a very energetically favorable process. In fact, we have to use ATP molecules to carboxylate and then the process of decarboxylation releases energy and that helps drive the fatty acid synthesis process forward. So we see that fatty acid synthesis is driven by the release of carbon dioxide molecules via a decarboxylation step. Now, in addition to this decarboxylation step, we also have reduction steps. And, this re and these reduction steps actually utilize reductant molecules. And in the case of fatty acid synthesis, these are NADPH molecules. And a final thing you have to know about fatty acid synthesis is the following. Fatty acid synthesis actually stops at the 16 carbon stage, the palmitate stage. So our fatty acid synthesis, uh, synthase will essentially stop the process of producing those fatty acids once we form a 16 carbon molecule. Now, 
Once we form that 16 carbon molecule, we can actually elongate that 16 carbon molecule or we can even add double bonds, but this happens at a different site in the cell and it uses different enzymes that are not the same as the fatty acid synthase.